In this video, I would like to give you an insight into how commercial banks have an impact on the economy. But first, a quick reminder of what we call a transaction. For example, a seller offers a bicycle and can sell it to another person, who is willing to accept his conditions. We call this person a buyer. When it comes to an agreement between the two, the seller receives the money and the bike changes its ownership. Here, the transaction takes place in the market for bicycles. But there exists also a market for money. Let's look at an example. Imagine that a person dreams of owning something valuable for which he or she needs some extra money that they do not have. He or she can get credit. How is this done? The person can borrow the extra money from a lender who has enough of it becoming a borrower. The lender may be either a person, a business or an institution and very often commercial banks lend money for these purposes. Just like in a normal transaction, both sides must agree on the conditions of the contract before the borrower gets the extra amount of money, also called principal. The principal must be repaid within an agreed period of time. In addition to the principal, the bank requires a financial compensation, called interest. In summary, the borrower has a debt with the lender of the amount of the principal plus the interest which must be paid in an agreed period of time. But who can get credit? Well, before banks agree to lend any money, they usually check if the borrower appears to be able to repay. Thereby, they look for security in the form of property like real estate or other valuable things that the borrower might have. If there are no problems, the borrower is declared creditworthy and the bank lends her the money. But it is important to mention that the more a borrower owns, the safer the bank feels and thus is willing to lend her more. So let's see what our borrower can do with the new money. She can enter another market, for example the market for cars. Just as before, a transaction is settled and the car dealer receives the money for it. After many of these transactions and all the money he saved, the car dealer's credit worthiness increases and this makes it easier for him to borrow money from the bank. So if the bank agrees, he receives more money. Of course, again under the condition that he repays his debt in the future. Now he can invest it in other markets and accordingly we see that more borrowing causes more spending and thus more transactions. This process leads to economic growth. Well, you might ask yourself, where does all this money come from? Does this process come to an end? I'll try to give you an explanation in the next video. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.